What's going on, SML? SML Countdown is back. Straw, AJ, and myself. I know it's been a little bit of time, but uh, we figured rather than force an episode, we just go ahead and uh, and save up till we got one. And I think we got a good one here, guys. What's going on? What's, What's up? up? What's up? Glad to be back. All right. So, so in chat, we've seen uh, we've seen a lot of talking about returning kicks, shotgun runs, quick snapping when guys are up. What do you guys think about uh, the unspoken rules in the SML? Straw, we'll start with you. Yeah, uh, you know, for me personally, I I like to I like to try to play a game that that makes both guys feel like you know they had a shot uh, and that feels like a good competitive game. So for me, you know, I think I I just try to stick with with uh, uh, playing a good game. So you know, with returning kicks, I'll be like, all right, I I. I I might not return a kick or if it's a bad penalty, we know Madden is crazy. You know, I'll, I won't, I won't accept that penalty, uh, stuff like that. I, I just try to figure out what's going to make the game the the smoothest and, and allow us to not fight at the end of like, Oh, this, all that. I just want it to be like, ah, uh, you know, Madden EA already has enough BS that we have to get through. You know, yeah. I, I try to sift through that and then let the game kind of play itself out. What do you think, AJ? What are, what are your thoughts on these unspoken rules? You know, a lot of these unspoken rules are just stupid because of EA and their incompetence of balancing a game. So you kind of kind of have to take that into effect. Um, some guy's competitive edge makes them do crazy things. So I understand that to an extent. I think I think the simness lies in uh, moderation uh, with just about everything, whether it be kick returns or um, inside zones or whatever. That's the flavor of the week. Um you know, that sort of thing. It's just moderation. You know, if you if you want to return some kicks, if they're not kicked in the end zone, by all means. If if if, if I kick a ball and it's at the two yard line, guess who's not getting mad because the ball is returned on me? Like, I mean, that's part of the game. Um, but if you're pulling them out ten yards deep, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, you're just taking advantage of you know. Well, this will be an easier score than me driving the field for eighty yards. So, um, now obviously there's scenarios where that may be okay like if there's four seconds left on the clock and the guy's kicking off on you i mean shoot that's probably your best option to try to win the game i, I can't fault you for that you know I, I have i have more of a problem with people that just constantly just abuse it you know what i mean yeah which i think is where most people's grief lies i'll say what the toughest part of these these uh unspoken or unwritten rules in the sml is they don't exist in primer so going from uh an sml <laughs> game to a primer game where it's more like the wild west <laughs> uh it's uh it's definitely an adjustment so we saw qp lose the super bowl because he kicked it 10 yards deep in the end zone and here comes doc returning it for a touchdown game over <laughs> so uh yeah it's uh it's a lot different out there i think i think some of the rules are good um you know not not quick snapping if uh if you flip the play because we know how the defense kind of will then get all screwed up um and then some of those roughing penalties but i i think somebody brought it up in chat too that um as far as the roughings, if you call safe, you don't get those roughing penalties. It's it's when you call those blocks and, you know, nobody's overturning a block that they get. So so maybe the roughing ones, you call that, you kind of live by the sword, die by the sword in that. Do you guys think there's any other uh, any other type of, like, kind of unspoken rules you can think of that that maybe don't even get pointed out as much, but they're, they're kind of unspoken rules? Straw? I'd say for me, I mean, there's nothing that I – that I notice, I know I do try to just pay attention to to play in a, a a sim game. So I I will even admit sometimes I overthink it. I'm like, oh man, this play worked. Uh, you know, earlier in the game, did I run it already, or like when did I run it, or should I run it again? Like, there's things that I I even think about with playing and, and stuff like that, especially with my with my game style. Uh, because I'm not I'm pretty simple. Uh, with with how I play, so I, I definitely try to like make sure I'm aware and that I'm paying attention. Um, and so that's something that, that really kind of bubbles up for me, trying to make sure that, you know, uh, I'm keeping my game pretty sim. What about you, AJ? You got any, maybe, maybe just ones that you use? Some unspoken rules that I use. I don't know. I try to not call the same play more than one time. Yeah. Not necessarily like a, you know, like a type of run. There's only so many different types of runs, whether it be zones or stretches or dives, whatever. But, um, you know, if you have a, quote unquote money play or something that you really like, you know, I don't want to see it three times a game. Yeah. Like sometimes I do. And I'm like, okay, well, I remember seeing that. 
you know, you don't, and as, as an opponent, you're like, you don't expect to see that play again. Cause you're like, well, we try to mix up our play calling, <laughs> yep. but then you do. And I'm like, this guy's only ran 30 plays and he's run the same one three times. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's a good look personally. Yeah. Well, I guess the rules though. Yeah. I've seen Matt, uh, watching his streams. He'll call out like, uh, I think it was busy was playing. He's like, Oh, here comes the, uh, cross something. And sure as shit, here it was. There's the exact same play he called out. I mean, he knew what it was going to be. Just based off the formation, it must have been the only thing he plays. Um, I know for me, like, and maybe I shouldn't say this because it'll give some stuff away, but if I run play action, I'm not going to run it two in a row. If I run, like, a stretch, it's not going to be a stretch. I mean, there's nothing in the rules that says you can't run stretch left and stretch right, um, you know, even one time. And it's just for me, I'm not running the same thing twice. And maybe I, maybe I shouldn't say that, or maybe I should just start start breaking my own unspoken rules. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure other guys have some, and if you guys have some, just add them in the comments. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll have a whole book of unwritten rules that we'll just write down. Um, <laughs> so, so our second topic, um, and this is this is a good one. I, I like that you came up with this one, Straw. The art of trading. We've seen the trade deadline; it's come and gone, and really, you do see a lot of guys that kind of. As soon as trading opens up in the uh, resign period, they're already done. You can't even make a trade in game, and they've already burned all three. Um, some guys, maybe even more now that we don't count pick for pick trades. But do you have any like, I guess, tips or or what's your style for working the trade deals? Personally, I uh, I'm a reluctant trader. I, I feel <laughs> like unless somebody comes to me with a deal that I'm like, wow, this is actually good for me. You know, I, I'm not super aggressive when I'm reaching out to people. Not when I have to make a move, you know, I'm not super great at valuating players either on Madden. You know, mm. I mean, I could I could tell you how valuable they are in real life, but in Madden, I'm like, I mean, who who the hell yeah. knows? Because you got you got 68, 99, 68 overall, 99 speed receivers that people are paying, you know, second round picks for. You know, so it's kind of there's some. Um, some gray area there with a few things, you know, <laughs> 90 speed linebackers, stuff like yep. that. They didn't have to be any good, but if they, you know, if they had the stati the uh, attributes that people like, personally, that's, I'm kind of a reluctant trader. I, it, Bomber can tell you too, like, when I'm going into trade talks with people, I will back out quicker than I will, um, not necessarily agree to it and then back uh -huh. out, but I'll be like, you know, what do you think about this? And then they'll be like, well, I think I'll do that. And I'm like, well, on second thought, you know, I don't know. Oh, so, so you, you'll propose and, and walk out. Okay. So yeah. Like, you pull well, I'll the be honest up. with you, though. At least, at least I won't ghost you like yeah. uh, some people I won't name on that's, the stream. So. That's true. Straw, how about you? You got any any tips? Yeah. Or what's your your uh, kind of go-to way to trade? Yeah, for me, I think I think I get uh, better with trades later on in, uh, in, you know, the cycles and later on in Madden. I would say early on, one, uh, at the beginning of seasons, I really like NFL rosters. Like, I mean, yeah. I like kind of making the guy, especially during the football season, I like seeing the same guys that I'm using, you know, uh, also doing good and, and, and playing with them. So that that's one thing that makes it hard for me in the beginning. But also, you know, I feel like the game switches up so much early on, you know, so some things that you think work and you think you're building your team one way and, you know, those things aren't as great. Like, uh, it seemed like speed could kind of get locked up a little bit better uh, in this Madden versus in previous Madden. So for me, you know, um, later on, it, it starts to help once you kind of get down your game style. Um, and and even still, I think I, I I would say I'm a little more reluctant like AJ. I, I'm kind of thinking it through and like, oh, well, will this work for me? And, and how can I, you know, what do I need and what can I use? Uh, I've barely done any trades with the Rams because we have nothing to trade. I, I trade draft picks or, <laughs> yeah. or that's really it. No one wants any of those players. So, uh, <laughs> but that's usually my strategy with trading um, is just trying to, you know, uh, understand my game style and then figure out like, all right, what pieces do I have? Um, and, and who looks good when I, if I play the backup and can I get rid of the starter and maybe get some draft picks, but player for player is always really hard for me. Yeah. So, so some of what I'll do, first I'll look and see what I want to get rid of. If I want to get rid of a certain player, and then look and see who needs that player. Like um, Akuda, I needed to. I wanted to get rid of Jeffrey Akuda. I looked through everybody's team, and I'm just sorting through cornerbacks, seeing who's got either a slow corner or who doesn't have anybody with like 80 zone, because um, Akuda had 80 zone. So who can, 
who who would he be an improvement for? And I found Monty's Cardinals. They didn't have anybody over like 71 zone. And everybody plays cover three, cover four. Um, so you need somebody with zone. So I'll, I'll go and I'll, I'll try to talk to whoever needs the guy rather than waiting for him to reach out. Um, Cause everybody posts everybody on the, on the trade block. And I don't know that anybody sends DMS asking about those guys. So I try to find who needs, who needs what I'm trying to move. And if I, if I have a guy like Velas Jones this year, he's not quite as fast as he was. I think last year, I think last year he got like 96 speed. I'd immediately be DM and fig. Hey, you want Velas Jones? He's got 97 speed. Cause you got to know who you're trading with and what they want too. Fig, you can trade him anything with speed and he's going to give you everything. He might give you his new baby. Um, if you had like a 99 speed. So I think to me, you got to, number one, you have to reach out just waiting for somebody to DM you because your trade block isn't going to happen. Know what you're, what you're trading and who needs that. And then kind of know who your trade partner is and what they like. Uh, some guys in this league, Colt, for example, RD love offensive line. Um, you look at RD's offensive line. He's got like three superstars all over 90. Um, they're awful. It's, it's not helping a, a ton, but um, he likes offensive line. He likes pass rushers. Colt loves <laughs> offensive line. Um, so if you know what guys guys like, you can kind of work a deal there and and figure out where you're not wasting your time with AJ going back and forth and pulling his own deals. So, um, and this is why you're a master trader. That's, that's right. <laughs> but um, okay, so so now that we've given some advice, let's stir the pot a bit, and we'll start with. Uh, Let's go with what team has a bad record, um, but they're they're probably better than their record is right now. Straw, who do you, who do you have as a uh, a guy that's underperforming? Yeah, um, you know, and he, he's climbing his way up right now. I mean, in, tonight he went one and one, but I got to go with Monty. He kicked yeah. my butt. You know, I I think that uh, it's an easy one uh, because I just lost. But you know, Eckler and, and Kyler Murray are a dangerous duo, man. Like Eckler can break all 11 tackles on the same play and <laughs> Kyler Murray can obviously take it to the house. Uh, and so I think Monty plays well. Uh, his record was not reflective of that. And our division is pretty tough. Oh. Um, so we're going to see what he does down the stretch. But I'd have to go with Monty uh, when I look through all the records. Yeah, I think it was our last episode. You had Eckler as the uh, your top play and he just ran through your whole defense and he just did it again. This week, yes, they did it. Uh, AJ, who's first your... play of the game. Yeah, I, I ended up catching that. Oh, he's got to retire <laughs> soon. AJ, Dude. who's your uh, your underperformer? I'm gonna say Dom, and I know he think I think he took a force a force loss recently, but I think yeah. he was dropping a few games in a row, getting pretty frustrated. Um, but he's a guy that everybody knows is a tough out. He doesn't make many mistakes. Unfortunately for him right now, he's he's playing with a QB that makes a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And uh it that's tough to it's tough to overcome when maybe you're not a flashy offense that picks up chunk yardage and you know you're more of a you know get the third and short and then pick up the first kind of guy. And your, your QB misses throws and stuff like that, you know, it can get in your head. Um uh, I think that's a guy that once he gets comfortable and once he gets some players in the right spots, he's going to make some noise, but right now he's he's struggling. Um, and I, I can relate to it. So, yeah, I could see that as one, uh, mine, I think is a, is an easy choice. Rowan. I don't think he has a single win yet. He's only given out a couple force wins. The majority of his losses have been, uh, while he was here somehow this is a guy that's been in the playoffs multiple times, um, is winless. Couldn't win a single game last season. We saw him, uh, bench Russell Wilson plays Max Duggan. Oh, he's going to be the quarterback of the future. He's gone. Uh, I don't think anybody's surprised that he was uh, playing for a quarterback. Javante Williams was on the bench. He started Tyler Batty because he was faster. He's going to be the future. He's gone. Um, so now he, he's like 0-7, <laughs> gives out a few force wins when he goes on his uh, his little vacation. And winless? That, there's no way Rowan is winless on accident. Um, so he's definitely one that's... Got a bad record, but uh, far better than his record. Um, you could just go back to a couple. Hell, I think he might have been in uh, in Matt's top five multiple times last cycle. So uh, to go from that to not even having a win, it's, it's uh, definitely underperforming. But so we, we've talked about the underperformers. Now we got to call out the guys that are uh, maybe overperforming. 
Straw, who's your guy that has a good record, but it's it's really just fool's gold? Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to go with Woods here. Oh, elder um, abuse. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Woods, and it hurts to go uh, to say this about my Eagles, but, I, but I'll say I think that Eagles team is doing a lot of work for him, man. He's got uh, a lot of great, great talent all over the place. Um, and I think he, he's won some that, that maybe he could have lost uh, if not for a player making a spectacular play. Uh, and so uh, I think I think we're going to see a little less once he gets into the playoffs. Uh, and so uh, that 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 would be my pick. I think Woods, is his record is, is better than where his skill is and, and how he's playing. All right. What about you, AJ? All right. I'm going to take the uh, – I'm looking at the standings in both conferences. I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit here. And it's a guy that's beat me twice this cycle, so I'm saying this with with respect, you know. Uh, I'm going to go with Biz, um, only because we need to see it in the playoffs. And and I think he will make the playoffs a few times this cycle, but I don't think his his play style is going to translate against the better players in the league. Uh, They're going to get real heady to some of the stuff he likes to do. Um, And, um, you know, you can take this as a challenge, Biz, but you got to open up that offensive playbook a little bit. You're good on defense, but um, I see you make some noise in the playoffs. Now that you're, you got a, a, a solid team like the 49ers, and you're, you um, you have a very winnable route to get into it. So uh, um, that would be my pick. Yeah, that's a that's a bold pick to take the guy that's beaten you twice. Uh, yeah, but, well, but you do I have the same myself, record too, or just nine, about. So. He's a he's a half game ahead of you. Uh, I'm gonna I go with to pick I'm gonna go with dump dump at seven and four, and this this may be. Maybe it's not so much that he's bad, but his record is looking a lot better than where I think he's going to finish because that AFC is stacked. Um, he's sitting at seven and four. He's probably maybe the sixth best team in the AFC, um, and I, I think right now he's he's having uh, the benefit of a of a schedule that's kind of light. He got Dan week one. Um, everybody's kind of off week one because you had that long break for the off season, and some people had a long break for the playoffs. So. It, I think Dump is going to be one that kind of falls back to earth. I think it's, it's going to be tough for him to win a playoff game in that AFC. Um, it's absolutely loaded, and I think that 7-4, and four, um, he's going to get in, but it's going to be an early exit. So with that being said, let's move on to our top plays. And our top plays, AJ, who do you have for your top play? All right, so we have an absolute dog here, which is Alexander Madison. It's an ex-Viking. And look at this man, just shedding tackles like crazy. He's running out of steam here at the end, but he gets in the end zone. UP saw something in that Madison that I didn't see when I traded him over there. So respect to QP, respect to Alexander Madison. Crazy run. Yeah, maybe that's why you're a little hesitant to make trades because uh, that one seemed to work out for QP. Straw, what's your top play? Yep, we're we're gonna go with a run here too, cause I can't seem to make plays like this, man. Uh, you see, Tony Pollard just getting through this. This this was reminiscent of uh, what Eckler did to me, so maybe that's why I was like, oh yeah, no, that's the one. Uh, he just breaks through. It looks like he's gonna get gang tackled, and no, no, he he won't be denied. And then he's really fast. Like almost everybody's off the screen by the time he's getting into the end zone. Uh, just a heck of a play by uh, by uh, Meets there. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the theme here, and I'm gonna go with uh, KJ and Brees Hall. You see Brees Hall against Fig come in here, and, and he just punches the safety <laughs> and knocks him down, and then takes off and he's gone, <laughs> outruns everybody else. But just that hit he puts, just stiff arms him right to the ground. I mean that looks like Derrick Henry in real life, and uh, it's nice to see KJ get on the top plays. So I'm gonna go with Brees Hall. So everybody, go ahead and vote in the comments uh, who you think is gonna win, and. That means it's time for the last straw. And straw, what do you have this week? Yeah, so what we have this week, it is the last straw for the NFC because the AFC is kicking our butts. Uh, the AFC, the, we got five teams uh, with, you know, two teams with a 10-2 and two record, three teams with a 9-2 and two record, absolutely dominating over the NFC. Um, I think even when you look for the points um, for – for the AFC teams, they have multiple teams um, above 30, whereas the NFC has no one uh, um, at 30. Everybody's still under 20. The closest being uh, 
um, being bomber with the Bears at 29. Uh, and, you know, the AFC is just making it clear that they have all of the dogs and the NFC, we got to catch up. And so I, this is the last straw. We, the NFC, we got to do something. We have to start playing better and we got to, you know, make some noise and show that we got, we got some skill over here too. Uh, so this is just a shout out to the AFC for, for having all the dominating teams and, uh, and a little call out to the NFC teams, uh, as we start, you know, building up our, our teams and getting them closer and overalls to some of these AFC teams, we got to start competing. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make a bold take though. I'm going to say that every season, somebody from the NFC is going to make the Super Bowl. So you know, I'm going to go out on a limb. Don't, don't think about that too hard. Um, but every season, somebody's going to make the Super Bowl from the NFC. So um, I think we'll hold our own, at least in appearances. But uh, so that's so that's been it for this episode. <laughs> Remember, guys, write down or uh, comment with any of your unwritten rules or uh, your votes for top play. And uh, we'll be back with SML Countdown as soon as we come up with more topics. Thanks for being on, guys, and see you guys later.